I've taken a big break from sewing. I'd almost given up because I just couldn't keep up with what everyone else was doing. I didn't have the funds, especially with the cost of living this year going up. Um, I didn't have the funds to keep buying fabric. I had this coating fabric. Um, I bought it in January 2021 um, with some Christmas money. I wasn't sure if it was my colour. Now I realise, yeah, it is, my, it is within my cool winter colour palette. I went back through Instagram, I had a big scroll, and then I came across a closet core um, Claire coat. Now this has been out a few years now, so I never tend to make a pattern as soon as it comes out unless I really like the pattern, because sometimes with indie patterns, they can be quite pricey. So I decided on this one. Because it has quite a nice shape to it, it's not too boxy. I wanted a little bit of shape, but not too oversized. But I did um, do a few snippets of making the coat. So I will insert those clips now, and then um, I'll come back and I'll show you the finished coat. This is the start of my coat making. Hopefully it won't take me too long to make it. I have chosen the Closet Core Claire Coat pattern. I've made one out of a duvet cover and I make a second version with some adjustments out of some calico. So I'm going to show you those two so you can see how I've adjusted them and why I've done that. Um, and then I have some wool coating but I need to steam all the wool fabric which is what I generally do because you can't just stick wool in the washing machine and I don't want it to shrink so I'm going to like pre-shrink it by steaming it with the iron. It's a bit of a lengthy process when you're doing it over an ironing board and sort of like moving over section by section but that's what I have to work with. So um, let me just grab and I'll put on the version that I've tried to make first. The duvet cover looks really bad but you get the idea. So this is a straight size 14 so it has a really high funnel colour which I'm going to reduce because well it, it's too high up so it goes over and it's a crossover and I think it's um, the version they show you is actually with a zip or you can do um, snaps and I have seen some people make their own buttonholes and do buttons but I think I'm going to go with giant snaps so they're hidden so anyway, this is the 14 I have shortened it by an inch over the waistband all the way around I have kept the sleeves um, the original length because I did read a review which said that the sleeves came up short. I'm five foot three, so that's not really an issue if the sleeves are short, I probably don't need to change them. So this is here, it probably has about an inch um, cuff, so if I just fold that over, you can see. Now I'm just wearing a t-shirt, and obviously with a jump with a wool coat, if I'm wearing a wool coat it's because it's cold outside, so generally you're gonna have a jumper on. So this is where the issue lies. So this is where it kind of crosses over, um, like so. I mean, it's not the best fabric to make it look really nice, but it was just to sort of get an idea. But I noticed that along here, it's like tight. So it just fits, but I have to think, if I'm making this out of wool, and it's got the interfacing on it, which I'm probably gonna use a sew-on interfacing, um, similar to like a horsehair canvas, so quite a stiff interfacing, and then a lining, it's too tight and it feels like low down on the, it's a raglan sleeve and normally if it's a set in sleeve I do a one inch narrow shoulder adjustment so I wasn't entirely sure how to do that. Um, all my jumpers are upstairs and my husband is sleeping after a night shift so I don't want to go rattling around the drawers. So, uh, but I will show you the version I sized up on. So I felt like the 14 was here, was fine here and I didn't want it to be puffing out too much. So what I've done with this version is I've cut an 18 up to um, like the bust point just above the waist and then I've kept it as a 14. So it's actually gone 18 down to 14 because I felt like if I did a solid 18 all the way along, it would just be too big. So we have the crossover here. I mean, this fabric being calico is a bit better for doing a mock-up because it's a lot stiffer and you can see how that's gonna lie. Um, I have folded over the cuffs by like a good inch or so, but I definitely don't need to shorten them because I think any shorter and it will be up. So just bear that in mind. If you're looking at this coat pattern and you are taller than me, you may need to even lengthen the sleeves. So it's gonna sit like that. I think I'm gonna take some depth out of the collar so it's sitting under my chin rather than Although I have seen a few people just wear it open because the collar is so big, so I'm not sure. But I may take half an inch or so 
out of the depth of that one there but there's so much more room it's a two-part sleeve and this version I feel like the the seam is sitting fairly straight on the other version um, it wasn't so much but I feel like with this there's plenty of free and obviously if you're doing it with snaps rather than a zip or something you can then obviously move the snaps but I feel like it still gives me enough room around the hip area um, and it's just not it's not too much of like an a-line bell shape on me but it's nice it feels loose because I've just got the t-shirt on but I have tried it over quite a bulky sweatshirt and it fits fine and it doesn't fit, feel tight so I did compare it with a previous jacket that I made this I've compared the sleeve part so 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 basically we've gone up to an 18 but then um, like I said because I said I normally do narrow shoulder adjustments on the closet core blog for this coat it does say that what to do for narrow shoulder adjustment is literally take a bit out of that bit not of the front bodice but out of the sleeve um just like shave a bit off the front and the back sleeve on certain so not on the very top where it joins but so half on the curve so like just like slim it down a bit and i, I mean obviously it's not obvious where the shoulder sits but I mean, it does feel like it could be a little bit low down on the armpit, but I can still like move around in it. And so I think it's fine. I think having a two part raglan sleeve coat, it's not gonna be the easiest to make too many adjustments on because uh, the pieces sort of don't sit as straightforward. But what do you think? So this, I think this will be the final version. I think I'm happy, like I said, to take a bit of depth out of the collar. I could wear it um, sitting open like that but I think it's quite a good length as well. So obviously it will have a good sort of inch or so probably taken up, but then it will skim just below my backside, which I think is a good length for a winter coat. If you've got jumpers on, that kind of thing. Um, and so yeah, so it does have pockets, but I've just left the slits open so I can show you where my hands will go. And I think that's a good height. So I'm hoping that it's going to go okay. Let me show the fabric. Stage one is to give it a good steam and let that dry out before I can then cut out. And I have got, let me just show you the interfacing. I bought this from William Gee in London. And I, I had some of this in one another coat and I thought it was horsehair canvas. It smells a bit horsey, but I don't think it is horsehair, but it's very similar. I did email them a picture of the canvas I'd bought before, um, so I'm not sure, but it is a sewing one, and it's quite a heavy-duty one. Now, with this coat pattern, it does tell you how, how, where to put um, interfacing in, so that's what I'm going to do. So sewing the interfacing in is probably going to be a bit of a pig of a job to do, because there's pieces to trace off and cut out, and then I do it by hand rather than using a iron-on one just because some of the iron-on ones um, they, I'm not that happy with them whereas this one I know this is like tailoring techniques it's half term this week so I have got time to work on it but I need to do it before the cold snap really kicks in so this is today's progress um, it's still it's Monday morning and I'm hopefully gonna get some work on this this afternoon but I do need to go in and get some green thread ready for then sewing in but there's be lots of cutting out to do first so i will keep you posted end of a, end of day two and i'll show you what i've been doing so on and off today i have been so last night i cut all the interfacing out and then today in between like mum duties um i have been attaching the interfacing to my wall pieces of fabric now, because I use a like a horsehair canvas, but I think it's actually a polyester, um, I have hand stitched it. So, all, so what I've done is I've cut away um, most of the seam allowance on all the pieces. Otherwise, it, because this is quite stiff, it's gonna be really thick and bulky on the seams and I don't want that. So I had to trim all the interfacing down. And then because of that, I've had to then catch stitch all the way around. If you have, if you cut it the same size as the wool piece of fabric, then when you stitch the seams together, it will catch the interfacing. But obviously I've cut that away so I don't have big bulky seams, so you have to attach it because you can't iron this on. This is a sew-on one. So I have stabbed my thumb multiple times, 
but I think I've done all the pieces now so all the pieces which need to be interfaced have been interfaced it has taken hours hopefully it is a job worth doing there and it make it nice and stiff to make it hang nicely I still haven't cut the lining out because I know it's going to slip all over the place so I think that is a job for tomorrow it's getting late on in the day now but I just wanted to do an update of um day two where I am at with my coat day three house is a mess hair is a mess and that's because we're sewing so all the lining pieces have been cut and this is the main body of it so i've sewn that together the light is going and i can't bother to get on my light set up and everything so i'm going to probably sack it for today and then start on in the daylight tomorrow so this is the main, most of the coat has been sewn today so this is the bit which is going to be attached with the sleeves to the main body of the coat. I've done the sleeves, the front and the back sleeve, um, but I haven't put them in the tube because I then need to press it, that kind of thing. And that's just, when I'm sewing black, it's a bit tricky this time of night. So that's the lining and I'll show you where I am with the coat. Um, I've just got it on this chair here. So I've only put one collar on. I need to read through the instructions of when you put the other collar because I've cut two collar pieces out. So this is all joined together now i have top stitched on the front and the back arm as instructed i've got this sweatshirt on because like i said i'd sized up so i could fit it over a sweatshirt um so this obviously will have a lining put in as well but this is where i'm at so this collar is going to stand up and it's like it one side folds over the other side here um Obviously there'll be a, it's like a two inch cuff, I think. But the join for the, um, the, seal, the seam for the sleeves, I feel like it is going straight down the center of my arm. Whereas when I cut a smaller size, it wasn't. So I'm quite pleased with it. So this is how it will sit eventually. So like I said, I cut an 18 on this and then agreed it down to a 14. If I'd cut an 18 all the way out, I think it would have really kicked out. So I've got pockets. Um, they're quite a good height. Some people I've seen wear it with the collar out. But I've tried to really give it a good press because I had such a disaster with our local dry cleaners and the last jacket that I made, I'm trying to avoid going there. Um, Anna from You Got Me In Stitches made me some really nice um, tailor's hams. So I have this one and the other one I packed away but she did like a, like a long sausage one for the actual sleeve, like a sleeve roll. And they've come in really handy because it's being raglan to actually press on those curved seams so that's really good i have been using my iron which is behind me on a wool setting with a cotton press cloth i've also used um, a clapper this is one that my dad made me a few years ago hi dad if you're watching um, and so i've done the iron and then i have done the clapper as well so i'm high the seams are coming up relatively well relatively flat it will just be the bottom i think it will just be the actual hems that will be the sort of test on getting a really good press because i think that really gives it the finishing touch of whether you've looks like you've made it yourself if you know what i mean so what do you think this is our this is my progress signing off for today back on it again tomorrow and it looks like i should get it finished by the end of the week so in the end the the 18 grading down to a 14 seemed to work i'm really pleased with the way it's turned out i tried to press it as well as i could but i had the iron on wool setting so i had a pressing cloth put that on and then i took the pressing cloth away and got my wooden clapper which my dad made me a few years ago and just pressed that right down to try and squish that seam flat because like I said before, I took a jacket to the dry cleaners once and they pressed a crease down the center of the sleeve on the outside. Like, why on earth did they do that? So the jacket, um, I think will do me through winter time and it obviously it can be worn open. The lining is quite boring, but that's because I had anti-static lining from a few years ago, just plain black and that's what I had. So I thought, well, that'll just minimize the cost. I'm not going to be, I'm not too precious when it comes to my makes, so I will, you know, I will hang it up. I did obviously put a loop in there, which it does say to, that you can do. And I know some people think that that's terrible because it kind of distorts the jacket shape. But for me, um, I will wear it and I will, you know, take, you know, I will take care of it, but I will wear it and wear it. And that's the whole point of why we make stuff, isn't it? To make things to wear, to get enjoyment out of it. Um, let me know if you have made the Claire coat. There's some really good images on Instagram of people who've made it with snaps, buttons. I think someone might have even put a zip in as well. Um, and 
I'd love to know how you got on and if you think or if you're going to make a different winter coat I thank you for joining me today and I will be back soon with sharing the coats and jackets that I have made <laughs>